What's up everybody, welcome back. My name is Mike Versbrill, and for today's video, we're gonna talk about those time-lapse clips that you saw at the beginning of this video because I had a lot of people ask me questions about them. They want to know the settings that I use and how did I set that up on my camera. So I'm gonna show you guys how I did that so you can do it with your cameras as well and create some pretty cool time-lapses. So I'm actually gonna change the view so you can see the back of my camera and we'll get into that. All right, so here is the back of one of my Nikon D800s that I was using at Owens Valley Radio Observatory in Big Pine, California, where I was taking those pictures. Now I used a Nikon D800 with my 14 to 24 millimeter lens, taken at 14 millimeters. My f-stop was 3.2, my ISO was 5,000, and my shutter was 15 seconds. And then for my Nikon D810, I had a Tamron 15 to 30 millimeter lens that I was shooting at 15 millimeter, ISO 5000, f3.2, and my shutter was 20 seconds. So typically I keep most of my time lapses in that range, and I'll also set the white balance just to make editing a little bit easier, but uh, that varies depending on the location because of light pollution in the area and things of that nature. Now I do recommend taking some test shots to make sure you're in focus and then leaving your camera in manual focus mode because it will try to autofocus if you are doing a time lapse and you leave it with the autofocus um, you know, left on. So you definitely wanna do that. And you also wanna cover up your eyepiece here. So certain Nikon cameras have it built in and you just flip this switch and this will prevent stray light from shining into your viewfinder, which can mess up your exposure. Uh, if you don't have one of these things built in, uh, you can take a piece of tape and just cover that up with some gaffer's tape, and that will block out the light, and it'll help you out with your time lapse. Now let's get into setting up the camera. So I will set my settings, 15 seconds, f3.2, and my ISO is at 5,000. So you're gonna do that with your camera, which may vary from Nikon. You could have a Canon or Sony or, or something completely different. And then when I go into my menu, I'm gonna go down to interval timer shooting. Yours might be called something different. And if you don't have it built into your camera, don't worry. I'm gonna show you guys how you can do it on an external intervalometer like this so just stick with me all right so start option is basically you could delay your camera so it could start let's say a half hour from now or you could just start it immediately which is typically what I do next we have the interval so one might think that you set your interval to the same exact time as your shutter setting so if I'm at 15 second exposure I should set my interval for, to 15 seconds. You don't wanna do this because you need some time for that image to be written onto your CF or SD card in your camera. So I set mine to 16 seconds, which gives it enough time to write the information onto the card. Sometimes you even have to go two seconds past. For example, with this camera, if I'm doing a 30 second exposure, I actually have to set my camera interval to 32 seconds. Um, 31 isn't enough time. It needs two seconds to write and then take the next exposure. So that's just something to keep in mind. Next we have the number of shots we're going to be taking and number of intervals. Uh, typically I leave it on one interval and the number of shots could vary. It's based on you know how many seconds do you want your time lapse to be. And think of it this way. If, you're, if you have a 24 frames per second video, that's 24 images make up one second of video. 
And if I set this to 240 images, that'll give me a 10 second time lapse clip. And uh, you know, you're gonna have to figure out the time you're gonna have to stand there to take that because this is 16 second exposures per image. So it's gonna take a little bit of time. Um, they make calculators that are for free to help you figure this all out. So you could definitely look into that. Now, once I have all this set up, I would hit start and it would take these continuous photos uh, over and over until they finish. And um, then I would have to take the photos and edit them on my computer and combine them to create the time lapse using software like LR Time Lapse and Lightroom. You could also use other video programs as well. I'm not going to get into that with this video because there's a ton of videos on how to create time lapses and how to edit them. Now, if you don't feel like using software, which I highly recommend you, you do because you have more control over your images when it comes to editing them. But if you really don't want to do all that, there is another option that might be on your camera. Now, if we go down here, we have a time lapse photography option. And what this will do is it'll basically take the time lapse, but in the camera, it will combine all those images into a time lapse video for you. Now, you won't be able to edit those images though, but you can edit the video by itself. The problem is with videos, you don't get as much control as you do with the individual picture. So that is a downside, but maybe you want to avoid doing all the editing. This is a faster way to get a time lapse. So if we click on here, um, again, you're gonna set your interval to whatever you need it to be. So in this case, 16 seconds. Shooting time, we could specify two hours of shooting time will get me approximately 15 seconds worth of video. Now exposure, smoothing, I don't really mess with that too much, but I'm sure it might help getting a nice balanced time lapse, especially if you're shooting around sunrise or sunset. So you might wanna experiment with that if it's an option. And then it tells me down here it's doing 1080p at 30 frames per second. So that's the video it's going to generate once it does this time lapse. So this is another option for those that don't want to edit on the computer side of things and they just want to do everything in camera. But as I stated before, you will not have as much editing control as you will when you take individual photos. All right, so next up we have the external intervalometer. Now this is really good for people that don't have built-in ones on their camera. You're gonna have to get one of these guys, which costs like 30 to 50 bucks on Amazon, but they're totally worth it when you're doing long exposures or if you wanna get into night time-lapse uh, photography. This is great to have. Now I'm just gonna go over real briefly how to set this up for a night time-lapse, just like I would with my built-in intervalometer on the camera. So we have delay, long, interval, number of shots, and then turn off the sound. So you're definitely gonna wanna turn off the sound if you're doing a time lapse because the beeping can get really annoying. Uh, you just set that. Now for number of shots, right now it's on one. Now typically these things max out around I think 299. 399 so they max out at 399 but if you go to the dash dash that's infinite so it'll just keep on taking pictures so if you plan on doing a time lapse that's more than 399 photos you're gonna want to set it to dash dash okay so next we have interval and right now it's on one second but I'm going to change this to 16 seconds because my camera is set to 15 now I might have to change it to 17, you know, just because it works at 16 seconds on the built-in intervalometer doesn't mean it will work with this. So I gotta do a test to make sure. So let's set this to 16 seconds. All right, so I'm gonna hit start. Make sure you always test before you go out in the field to make sure it works properly. Now, if this doesn't fire, when this finishes the countdown, that means I have to go up to 17 seconds. Now, it didn't fire the second shot, so I'm gonna stop that. Let's try 17 seconds. Now, 
Just because it was 16 for the built-in intervalometer doesn't mean it's going to be exactly the same on the external. There it goes. So now it fired the next shot. So I had to set this to 17 and my camera is set on 15 to get it to work. All right, so I put the interval back to what it was and I'm just gonna jump over to long. Now long's pretty cool. So a lot of cameras, uh, let's say your longest exposure is 30 seconds, but what if you wanted to do an exposure that was longer than that as a time-lapse? So let's say I want to do a star trail time-lapse and I wanted all my exposures to be one minute exposures. I couldn't do that with the built-in intervalometer on this camera. I would have to use something like this with this long option. So if I hit set and if I set it to one minute and it's on infinity and I hit start and this is in bulb mode. So after the countdown of one minute, it's gonna take another exposure at a minute. So now I'm gonna get these really long exposures which will be really cool to do a star trail time lapse. Or if I had this on a star tracker, I could do you know one or two or even three minute exposure time lapses while it's rotating on the star tracker. So this is a pretty cool option to have. Um, all right, it's almost done. Just wanna make sure it fires again. And there it goes. So that's long. I'm gonna turn that off. And I'm just gonna put that back to zero. And if we scroll over one more, we have delay. And that's just to kind of delay the time lapse from starting right away. So if you didn't want your time lapse to start for about an hour from now, you could set this to an hour and then it would start firing once that countdown has finished. So that is your other option if you don't have a built-in intervalometer in your camera. There's a bunch of these guys on Amazon, different brands, they're all from China. It is what it is. Uh, find one that works well with your camera. Uh, make sure you have the right cord that matches up with your camera body. That's the most important thing. And if you wanna find out more about post-processing for time-lapse photography, there's a bunch of videos on YouTube uh, that will give you all that information. So just do a search for that and you'll find a ton of stuff already. So I'm not gonna get into it with this video. But hopefully this will help you guys get pointed in the right direction with setting up your camera for a night time lapse. All right, guys, take it easy. I'll catch you later. Bye-bye.